Good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayer for April 2nd, the Thursday before Palm Sunday. I'm Bishop Guy Irwin, and I'm glad you're joining me for Evening Prayer tonight. In order to participate fully in this service, you'll need a bulletin, which you can download either from the link that was with this video or from the website of the Southwest California Synod, or you can look it up in the church's hymnal, Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Both the, the service and the psalm are present there as well. If you do use the hymnal, the service begins on page 310 of the hymnal with the variation for Lent at the beginning of the service. But the easiest thing is the bulletin. I will tell you when to stand and sit during this service, but you should not feel that that is obligatory. You may remain seated for the entire thing if you wish. Let us gather our hearts together in calmness and preparation for worship. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life. The universe proclaims your glory. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the day to govern. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing, let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Our psalmody continues with Psalm 31, only verses 9 through 16. Psalm 31, 9 through 16. I'll begin with the first verse, verse 9, and if you will join me on all the even-numbered verses, I'd be grateful. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me on the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies 
and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The first lesson this evening is from Philippians, the first chapter. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. To all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The second reading is from a homily on Philippians by St. John Chrysostom. I am sure of this, Paul says, that he who began a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. Notice how he also teaches them to be humble. For after bearing witness to their great achievement, to prevent them from feeling humanly proud of themselves, he immediately tells them to attribute both past and future achievements to Christ. How did he do this? By not saying, I am sure that you will finish what you have begun, but he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. He did not deny them their success, for he said, I am glad of your partnership, that is, because they were good workers. But he denied that such success was theirs alone, saying it belonged principally to God. For in speaking of God, he is speaking of God when he says, I am confident that he who has begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. He says, I am convinced of this, not only with regard to you, but to your descendants. And this indeed is no small praise to tell people that God works in them. For as God, if God is no respecter of persons, which is certainly true, but looks at our aims before taking part in our achievements, it is clear that we ourselves are responsible for drawing him to us. So in that way, too, Paul has not denied them praise, since if God worked in us indiscriminately, nothing would have prevented him working in the Gentiles and the whole of humanity as well. If he moved us like lumps of wood or stone and desired no cooperation from ourselves. So when Paul says, God will bring it to completion, this too is, this too is to their praise, since they had attracted the grace of God to work with them in their efforts to transcend human nature. And this is also praise in another way, due to the very fact that their achievements were beyond human capacity, but needed the help of God. Then, if God is going to complete the work, their labor will still be great. But we must be confident, as we shall easily accomplish everything with God to help us. I invite you into a moment of silent reflection on these readings. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. I invite you to stand, if you wish, for the Gospel Catechal and the prayers that follow. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. 
You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Let us pray. God of wisdom, guide the leaders of the nations in this time of contagion and crisis, that they may speak the truth, stop misinformation, and act with justice and decisiveness so that all may know healing and safety. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, and in the midst of uncertainty, give us hope and peace as we wait for an end to the suffering. Amen. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. I wish you a peaceful rest.